Hey everyone, this is Bobo Rail here from Vigor Secrets and Lore. And today we're covering the top five things you didn't know about in Vigor. So just a quick disclaimer that just like other uh, things you didn't know lists, you may obviously know some of the things on this list. And for that, I apologize in advance. This list is in no particular order, but there are some honorable mentions and interesting stuff in here, so I would recommend watching the whole video. So let's jump right into it. At number one, we have different map locations. So obviously, there are a number of secrets in the game revolving around small details and text located on the maps that you bring up. And the first Easter egg we found, actually, was uh, from the in-game map in the home base. And if you would like to know more information about that, then I would suggest watching our first video. That I'll have linked down below in the description. But as I was saying, these, uh, these maps hold quite a few more secrets. And one of which is that they have real-life equivalents. In the top right of, the, uh, of every map, there's a short letter number series followed by AMS series M515. This is a series of maps that were actually printed by the US Army back in the 50s of North Europe and Scandinavia. The M515 series is that of Norway's and the series of numbers and letters before AMS is the specific map in the series. So it took a bit of work for us to find these copies of the original maps but we did eventually find them online, and here are a picture of two of those. So the one on the left is the one for, that we found in the Army Archives, and the one on the right is the one that you used to start a match in-game, when you walk up to in the shelter to uh, ready up for a new match. And so obviously they took some pretty heavy inspiration from the two, and uh, some maps from the army are also very similar in topography to the ones that we find in game. For example, Fish Factory's real life map, the series on the top right that matches to its uh, army equivalent, that one is has a very similar terrain as it's a coastal city with mountains slightly inland, and but I would say take that with a grain of salt, however, seeing as there isn't a ton of evidence to support the rest of it, other than the two in the home base matching up. But if you guys would like to investigate further, then I will have all the links to look and do your own hunting down below. So coming in at number two, we have more secrets from the in-game maps, but this time some different messages. So as I mentioned earlier, the maps that your player brings up are filled with easter eggs and some of them are small wrote notes written in Norwegian and all we have managed to do is use some Google Translate to decode them. If you speak any of these languages and you find out that our translations are wrong, please let us know either in the comments or on Twitter so that we can correct these. But so one of the messages that we found is at the top right corner of the home base map and it translates to the words born to be wild I'll show an image of that untranslated note up right now and this leads right into our other one that's not on the home base map but like the last one but it's on drug forest fortress I'm sorry and this one says military failure and so here's the image of that one. And so coming up at number three, we have a pretty big one that uh, we're going to have Jason or Chris cover in another video pretty soon. And this is the Russian involvement in game. So this one's a bit more lore oriented, but I figured I would include it on this list anyways, since it's such a big part of the game. So scattered around on a lot of the maps, there are old remnants of a military force 
obviously in the presence of broken down tanks and APCs, as well as old army camps. And it does leave the question of whose army was here. Who was fighting here? It's Norway, after all, a pretty peaceful nation. And so after doing a bit of research, we found that the tanks scattered around the map are of Russian origin, or based on this timeline, USSR. So this tank that we have up on screen right now is a Soviet T-54, which is the main battle tank of the Red Army following World War II, which would link perfectly into Vigor's timeline. More evidence of Russian influence is obviously in the guns in the game, like the A-74K and the PMM, but Chris, like I said, will have a video coming out soon about the USSR and the role that it might play in the lore, so if that's something you're interested in, I'll leave the, his video down in the description as well or in a pinned comment once it comes out. Moving on to number four now, so uh, we have your inability to walk up streams. I'm sure this is one that a lot of you probably know, but just in case the handful of, uh, of you out there don't know about this, if you're trying to ford a river and you're walking up against the stream, it'll put your character into a complete standstill. So, just so you know, in case you're walking up and you don't want to get sniped by some loser with a Mosin from 10 miles away, it's best that you just try and avoid them in general, but don't walk upstream. That's the uh, main lesson there. Alright. So, uh, finally, here at number five, we have that all windows are marked on the map on Drog. So if you zoom your map all the way in on any of the buildings on Drog Fortress, you'll notice that around the edges, there are small pink or purple lines on the perimeter of each building. And these mark the small windows on each house so that you can see where you might be vulnerable in a building if you need to take cover after a fight or while looting. And now granted, this may be a bug because as I said, it only shows the small windows and it only shows up on Drog. But even with it, I find it to be a cool feature. And honestly, I would be really interested to see if the devs could fully implement something like this into all the maps and see if it would actually end up impacting the way people play or actually affect gameplay. I don't really feel that the stuff on Draug right now is A, noticeable enough, or B, since it only shows the small windows, impactful enough to really change gameplay, but I think it could be something interesting to look into in the future. So now down to some honorable mentions. And at first, we've got some interior decorating details in the houses. After the update, adding the Rubik's Cubes to your home base, I believe it was 0.8, many houses all around the maps have had little Rubik's Cubes placed inside of them. And although this isn't a very big detail, I still thought it was pretty cool. And I'll show a couple screenshots of them right now. So right along with the Rubik's Cubes we have the model horses. So scattered around in many of the houses similar to the Rubik's Cubes you will find these small colorful horses and a few of them actually have custom positions. This one I'm uh, sure somebody had quite a lot of fun with and um, uh, on this next one, well, uh, I got the horses in the back. And uh, now for our final edition, I'm sure lots of our, uh, lots of you already knew about this, but uh, you can actually climb up on the cannons on Drog Fortress. If you jump on top of the railing and then vault onto the roof of it, it you can climb and walk all the way out to the end of the gun. 
This one's not all that exciting, but I've gotten my fair share of cool sneak attacks from up here, and I sh can assure you that you could probably pull some similar moves off too. But uh, that wraps up this video for the day. I hope you all enjoyed it, and if you guys think that we missed anything or that we should have included, leave it down below in the comments section or hit us up on Twitter. We'll have our Twitter and Discord linked down below if, you, if any of you would like to join the VSL community. And we are very active and do read what you guys say. This has been Bobo, and I hope you all have a fantastic day. Happy hunting. Happy hunting. Happy hunting.